Hi. I wanted to actually take another look at the AP Physics 1 free response question number 5 because I've been getting some questions about this system and, and I actually wanted to address this because I think the system approach was a little confusing and I wanted to clear up like how we handle systems or why systems approaches are simpler or how the systems approach is even equivalent to like maybe breaking up into different pieces. So recalling this question, we have two we have two masses here, and they're pulling on a different weights, and they're at different locations of radii um, in here uh, on this pulley. Okay, and then they tell you there's some there's some mass or some radii of the pulley of the smaller and larger pulley, and they rotate together and things like that. So so there, there's this kind of like complicated dynamic, but in the question, all they ask you to consider the entire system. So when we kind of had done this problem before, we say, well, what are the forces external to the objects and pulley systems? And you just consider any forces that are external at this point. So what are external forces? You have gravity on this guy. You have gravity on this guy. And if these were the only forces technically on the system, then um, the, the whole system would accelerate downward. But clearly, there's a, there's a, the axle is holding it in place that acts there that's that's where it's spinning around right and so we were i was saying was you know this is the original solutions is which is correct is to say well i can use the net torque and each of these is exerting a torque um and if you calculate the r vector basically the torque of this guy let's assume again let's assume in this case let's say counterclockwise is the positive direction and clockwise is the negative direction and this guy's accelerating downward and this guy's accelerating upward Right, that's our reference directions for the entire motion of our system. I would say the net torque is equal to, this would be a positive torque, it would be m0g times 2r0, and this guy would be, this force would contribute a negative torque, minus 1.5 m0g times r0, and this guy doesn't exert any torque because he's located at the axis of rotation, and thus has no, no, no contribution of torque there. And so this is where we got the net torque was equal to two of these minus 1.5, 0 0.5, M0G, R0. And that would equal I of the system times alpha. If you were to say alpha is, say, the angular, the angular uh, speed of, or the angular acceleration of the pulley. So we would say then that the alpha is equal to 0 0.5, M0G, R0 divided by I system. Okay, that's kind of like... In, in, in not so many words, how we kind of addressed it in terms of um, it, treating it as a system. But let's say you didn't want to treat it as a system. Let's say I would like to break it into two different blocks and add in the internal forces and then, 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 and then, and then figure out what alpha is. Well, then I would have to add in here a tension two from this rope and a here a tension from this rope on these two free body diagrams. And equal and opposite is a force on the pulley. T2 is pulling down and T1 is pulling down like this. Oops. And then now I've added the internal forces ropes of the uh, rope. So I'm going to consider object 2, object 1, and the, um, the pulley to be uh, three different objects. So I'm no longer treating it as a system. I'm treating them as three independent objects. And I want to solve for the angular acceleration. Well... The other thing I need to add some more variables are, are the acceleration for object one and the acceleration for object two. And note that I, I use different subscripts because I, I don't actually know for sure that they're gonna have the same acceleration. There's nothing, I would need to prove that they somehow have the same acceleration, okay? So from here, what we do is we do, free, we do net force equals ma. So let's do object one, for example. So for object one, we're gonna do net force equals ma. The net force is downward, so I'm going to say it's M0G minus T1 is equal to M0A. Okay, that's my, that's my first equation. Now for object two, what we're going to say is the, the, the net force is upward, so that's T2 minus 1.5 M0G is equal to 1.5 M0A. Net force equals MA. That's my second equation. And the third equation has to be on the pulley, which we use a torque equation. You technically can do net force, but then I would need to know the axial force, and that's not really super important. And I definitely need to focus on the angular speed here, angular anyway. So for the pulley, 
the, f the equation I'm going to focus on is net torque equals I alpha. Now the net torque, again, the T1 is a downward force acting at 2R0. So he is a positive 2T1R0. Two, two the T2 is a negative torque because it's, it's causing a rotation clockwise. So that would be a minus T2 times R0. See, this one is 2R0 because it's located twice the distance away. And that would be I of the, the say, the pulley times uh, alpha. And this would be our third equation. Now, what I have to do at this point is, oh, oops, this is supposed to be A2. This is A1. I should have put A2 and A1 in there, the subscripts. Now, how do I connect the acceleration? Now, what I know about A2 is that it's the same as the acceleration, the tangential acceleration here, okay? And if you remember, the difference between the linear and the, tangent, the tangential acceleration and the angular acceleration is that A2, which is the tangential acceleration right here, would have to equal um, um, alpha times R0, okay? Because it, in general, the tangential acceleration is alpha times R. And A1, it, by it being a larger radius, its tangential acceleration is going to be slightly different. It's going to be alpha times 2R0 because it's at a larger radius. Okay. So then we're going to plug those into these equations here. So for equation 1, I'm going to say that M0G minus T1 is equal to, uh, let me get those equations here. It's M0 times alpha uh oh two alpha r or so m zero times two alpha r zero right and then this guy is going to be t2 minus 1.5 m zero g is equal to um, 1.5 m zero and instead of a2 i put alpha r zero okay now here's the next step i'm going to do so so basically i have three equations and three unknowns. I don't know T1, I don't know T2, I don't know alpha. I mean, I don't know the rotational inertia of the pulley, but let's assume that that's like kind of a known information, even though they didn't assign it here, but just assume that we kind of figured that out. So how do I solve for alpha? Well, notice that I kind of have like a lot of T1s and T2s here, and basically I don't want to move things around. You could do substitution method. I feel like that's a little uh, clunky. So here's my trick I'm gonna do. I'm gonna multiply this side by R0. So I'm going to get M0GR0 minus T1R0 is equal to 2M0αR0 squared. And then this guy I'm also going to multiply by R0. So I'm going to get T2R0 minus 1.5M0GR0 is equal to 1.5M0αR0 squared. And then I'm going to actually line up all the equations together. M0GR0 minus T1R0 is equal to 2 M0 alpha R0 squared. This is the first equation going there. This, equ this equation goes right here. T2R0 minus 1.5 M0GR0 equals 1.5 M0 alpha R0 squared. And then last on the third equation, we would put it right underneath here, 2T1R0 minus t2 r0 equals ip times alpha now everything almost lines up for example if i think about adding these two together adding these three equations together the t2 r0 would cancel with the negative t2 r0 but these two don't quite cancel so i'm going to double this times two here and then i'm going to get 2 m0 g r0 minus 2 t1 r0 is equal to 4 m0 alpha r0 squared and now when I take these three equations and I add the left sides, think about everything on the left side. I have a plus 2T1R0 and a minus 2T1R0. I have a plus T2R0 and a minus T2R0. And so the left side just becomes this 2M0GR0 minus 1.5M0GR0. And then the right side is the sum of all of these. Uh, 1.5M0 alpha 0 squared plus this plus this. And these two can combine. I can pull out an alpha, and then these will combine to be 1.5 plus floor is 5.5 M0 alpha R0 squared 
oops, not alpha. I factored out the alpha plus IP. And the left side is here is 0 0.5 M0GR0. And then you just divide. Now, how do we compare these two? If I look at this equation compared to the previous one, they have the same numerator. They have the same torque. This is the torque, net torque we had. But the I system, basically this guy down here is the I system. I want to make sure I did this right because I felt like I kind of messed something up. No, I think uh, maybe it was 5.5. I thought when I did this before, I thought it was 5. So I might have made a mistake on the algebra there. But the idea is the same. We have the same net torque here, and we have the I system. So we get the same answer, but this process is way more complicated. It's a lot of algebra to put together. And you kind of see when you added them up, the tensions all canceled out, which is kind of like how the system works uh, when you do the systems approach. So you get the same the same answer. And in terms of like, I just want to make sure that it was clear that like those two scenarios are the same. And you may, you, there's nothing wrong with saying you don't want to treat it like a system and you want to just solve solve it this way. The only tricky thing is just like, it's just more and more algebra. It's a lot more math to get to basically the same result. So um, I just wanted to emphasize that to you guys, just like in, in case you, any of you are thinking about that. But that's that's kind of like the difference between the systems approach and the more straightforward. The systems approach gets you the answer faster. And that's why they're really asking about the objects pulley system. If you remember when I was, uh, if you saw my video when I was starting it, I was going to start by doing it by piecemeal. And I, I was thinking like, well, I can do it. I just showed it to you how you can do it. It felt a little too much work, and they didn't give you the rotational inertia of the pulley and stuff like that. So I was kind of like, I don't know if I want to do the break it down piece by piece rather than do it like a system. I felt like the system. And then when I saw that, oh, they're asking for the entire system, then I was like, well, I have to worry about the tensions. I don't want to worry about all of that. I just sort of look at it holistically as a whole. Systems is a very powerful tool in physics and a little bit misunderstood sometimes. You just have to remember that forces that are like inside of the system are not are really not modeled. You do not want to put them on your free body diagram. The only time you would model these internal forces is just like if you wanted to um if you wanted to like if I ask you to solve for the tensions, then you kind of have to split them up into different pieces in order to do that, right? Like uh, I can't obscure the internal forces, but when they're just asking for the net torque, uh, the systems approach makes a lot more sense. I hope that cleared up uh, for some people in their minds, or, or, or at least a lesson for some of you to just about how we take systems and how you look at a systems and why a systems can be uh, a systems approach can be a lot more effective and quicker on the algebra or less less math, less algebra to sort of get you the same answer.